So welcome to the Python and Oracle Database Office Hours, March 2019. Thanks for joining. Let me get uh, control back from Anthony. Okay, so on this call, I think you can see the faces there. We have Anthony Tuininga, creator and maintainer of the CX Oracle extension for Python. Uh, myself, Christopher Jones, product manager, and Blaine Carter, evangelist, all working in this open source scripting space. All willing to answer questions, all available, Twitters, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know where to find us, GitHub issues, things like that. So people who haven't joined the office hours before, it's really an ask me anything session. Uh, there's a couple of slides overview for the people who haven't seen it before. We have an icebreaker theme. This week it's going to be the input and output type handlers, the stuff. And then we'll just throw it over to you to ask questions. If you've got any questions, we're more than happy to answer those or take suggestions for what to cover next session. So you might have had a little time to play around with Zoom, uh, but you can chat with us either in the uh, obvious chat icon or on the, the more menu. Talk with us later by unmuting yourself. That's uh, no problem at all. And I had a little bit of stuff first. So Blaine, wake up. You are going to collaborate 19, is that correct? That is correct. And what are you doing there in the Python space? And, uh, let me pull up my calendar and give you the exact times. Uh, here we are. On Sunday the 7th, um, April 7th, I will be doing the Python hands-on lab at 8.15 a.m. and 1 o'clock p.m. Fantastic. That's Texas time. Uh, time. I'm not quite sure what zone they're in, but uh, okay. help me Sa collaborate. <laughs> San Antonio, USA, for the people like me who are not in, in that part of the world. Um, so that Python lab is the tutorial, which we do actually make public on GitHub if you want to run it yourself. But Blaine is there to answer questions and help you configure things, get everything running. Um, it's been a very popular lab for the last uh, year, year and a half that we've run it. And so I would encourage you to attend if you want to learn anything about Python CX Oracle or want to send somebody along to, to learn a little bit more. Uh, the next order item in the order is that there is no office hours next month in April. Got some vacation, etc., coming up. So the next one after that is currently in May. Um, things could change while I'm away since I won't have any control. So uh, just keep your, if you subscribe on the office hours page, then you'll get notification of email if things do change. Other than that, you know where to find the, the May agenda. And then we we're going to go into output type handlers. Now, Anthony, you were debating whether to do the slideware or do live demos. I will throw over to you. All right, I'll, uh, I'll just use the slides here. I'm familiar with them, enough with them, so I think they cover everything. And also, uh, if we want to show some actual code uh, running, I can do that as well. Uh, but first of all, output type handlers. Uh, the reason we have them is because the defaults that CX Oracle supplies, although they're pretty good in most cases, there are some cases where they are not as good as they could be, uh, where you might want to change things around a little bit. So some examples are given there. Uh, you might want to return numbers as strings or decimal objects. Uh, you might want to return Clobs and end clobs as strings or blobs as bytes. Or in Python 2.x, you might want to return strings as Unicode objects. And I'll show you those over the next few slides. So, so Anthony, let me just jump in there. So you're speaking about querying or binding, or how does this This work? is fetch. This is fetch. Also fetch. So this is for queries from the database. Yeah. And the attribute output type handler uh, can be set on either the cursor or the connection. If you set it on the cursor, then it only affects that cursor. If you set it on the connection, then it affects any cursor created by that connection. And as noted at the bottom there, you can use what's called a variable converter. And what that will do is will, it'll transform the value that's returned from CX Oracle into whatever object you wish to do. So you can retrieve a Python object seamlessly. So the first example here is output type handlers uh, returning numbers as strings. So as you can see here, this is just a standard uh, select statement that's being issued. 
and executed, and we're printing out the data. In this case, the, the uh, table has a single number, an ID, and a description. And you can see it looks there. There's the tuples on the side there with the number and the string exactly as you might expect. However, if we create uh, an output type handler function that's defined there on lines four through six, uh, then we can change what CX Oracle is returning. Now, output type handler functions accept the cursor and then a bunch of metadata in this, in the name, the, the type, the default type the size, precision, and scale. And see in line five, then we're just looking to see if the default type is number, and if it is, then we go ahead and create a different variable, a fetch variable instead of type string. The nine there refers to the length of the string, maximum length of the string. And then of course, cursor.array size, which is how many rows are being fetched at a single time. Then in line eight, uh, we set the output type handler attribute and then in lines 9 and 10, we issue the exact same query. But now, as you can see on the bottom uh, right, the, the output is now 1 and 2. The IDs are now strings instead of numbers. Another example that's uh, quite useful is returning lobs as strings or blobs as bytes. And the reason for that is because the performance is substantially faster for small lobs. Uh, otherwise, you have a round trip. That's where the, the database, the client has to request data from the database, and the database has to respond. You have a lot more of those round trips if you use a lob object. Uh, but if the data is you know, less than a few megabytes, uh, this method will be substantially faster. So again, in lines one through five, we define an output type handler. In this case, if the default type is clob, then we return a long string. Otherwise, if it's blob, we return a long binary. Again, line seven, set the output type handler, and then lines nine and 10, go ahead and retrieve. And now instead of a lob object, you will actually get a string back. Yeah, they're also a little easier to deal with. And another one that kind of can be useful at times is a decimal uh, converter. Uh, Oracle stores numbers as decimal numbers. And then the default that uh, Python and CX Oracle use is a floating point number. And those do not uh, map seamlessly. And as you can see on the bottom left, the default output, if we, re re if we were to retrieve some data uh, from a table, uh, in this case, just a single number, and then multiply it by three, you'll see that 0 0.1 looks pretty good, but 0 0.1 times three has a big long number that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. 3.1 multiplied by three looks perfectly fine, but 7.1 doesn't look very good. And of course, when you multiply by three, it looks just fine. So we can change that, however, by again, in lines four through six, defining an output type handler. In this case, again, if the default type is number, we're returning a string, uh, just like before, but in this case, uh, we are also setting an out converter. So what will happen is CX Oracle will convert the number to a string, and then it will pass it to decimal.decimal, .decimal, which will then convert it into a decimal object. Now, actually, CX Oracle has this kind of built in already, as you can see on line seven. You can make it a little easier, but that kind of gives you an idea of how out converters might work as well. And now, if you do the, the query, you will see on the bottom right that the numbers look much more sane. And the final one um, is objects. Actually, Anthony, can I just jump back? So, uh, yeah. I'm speaking muted. Um, that uh, line seven here, is this line seven doing exactly the same thing? Is it giving you a string or yes. is it giving me a decimal? Object? It's giving you a decimal object. And, but that's different from a string, right? Yes, it's a, it's, a, it's a decimal object. So line six and seven do exactly the same thing. It's just that line seven is um, simpler and CX Oracle knows how to deal with that. Mm -hmm. So it okay. sees the type decimal.decimal .decimal and knows what to do. So it uh, calls yes. it 
Yeah. yeah, sorry, I was, seeing, I was uh, not looking at the app converter there because I haven't seen these slides for a while. So the difference here to the earlier example where you're converting to a string is you're actually converting to decimal rather than string. Right. Mm -hmm. But on line six, we're using the intermediate type string and then calling a function decimal dot decimal to mm -hmm. convert it to a decimal object. So where does stir come for str come from in this particular case on lines? That is a Python type. Mm -hmm built-in type. For those people who don't know, good. Thank you for that. Yep. Um, so the final example here is with objects. Um, C Oracle has the ability to create, um, I guess, structures, objects that contain attributes. Um, they can also contain methods and the like, but we can't use those in Python. Um, so in this case, we're creating an out converter here that accepts the Oracle object, and then we're turning it into a Python object, in this case, a building object. So then here in lines five through eight, we've got an output type handler once again, and here we're check checking to see if the default type is cxoracle.object, and if it is, then we go ahead and uh, create a variable, a type object. You'll see there on line eight, there's a type name equals and that's the Oracle type name, in this case, UDT underscore building. And you'll see there's an out converter where we're using that out converter that we define in lines one through three. And then in lines uh, uh, 10, 11, and 12, we set the output type handler and then perform the query. And, and then you can see here that the output looks um, quite a bit different from what would be the default with CX Oracle, which would simply say CX Oracle dot object at and then and uh, hexadecimal address. Um, have you ever thought about making some of these defaults or is this now history and that's just the way it is? Um, the problem with the objects is I don't know what Python object people might want. So they have to do that themselves or use the Oracle objects directly. Which will be another session we could cover. Yeah. And finally, input type handlers. Uh, they work very, very similarly to output type handlers. Once again, you can set it on either the cursor or the connection. In this case, they're handling data that you are binding into Oracle, either as insert statements or even queries, uh, anything where you're binding data. And this allows you to enable types that CX Oracle doesn't know anything about to be bound into uh, Oracle database. Uh, you would have to, of course, in this converter, convert it to a Python object that CX Oracle does know something about. All right. Um, yeah, the example here, as you can see here in line 14, we're using our building once again. We've create, created a building um, with ID one and a description there, and the number of floors is five, and then, of course, the date it was built. And in line 16, we're going to in insert it into a table. And we put one in building. Now, if we did this this way, CX Historical would complain and say it doesn't know what to do with a building object type. So we create an in converter in lines here, one through seven. So the value that's coming in is the Python object, in this case, the building. And in line two, we create a new object the type was originally acquired, as you can see on the, on the right there, by calling connection.getType, a UDT underscore building. And then we can set the attributes, lines three, four, five, and six, to the values from the Python object. And then in line seven, we return the object, and that's the value that will actually be bound. And then in lines nine through 12, the input type handler is defined. That thing that function accepts a cursor, the value that is supposed to be bound, and the number of elements. Uh, the number of elements, of course, is typically one for a, a regular bind, but if you're using execute many, that will be the number of rows that you're binding at one time. So in this case, in line 10, we're saying if the value is a building, then create a variable of, once again, type object, with the type name equal to the object type's name, UDT underscore building, and the in converter, the function that we created on the lines one through seven. 
And now, if you do the cursor.execute to insert, you'll be happy. And that's it. So thank you, Anthony, for that little rundown with a few interjections. Um, by the way, our actual user documentation is getting a little closer to being ready. We have had API documentation for a long time, but we have had a doc writer doing some work on some user docs. So hopefully that'll get out there sooner rather than later. Stay tuned, you'll hear about it first here. But over to you, and I'll just put up the resources if anybody wants to drop off. Um, if you have any questions, unmute yourself or type them into the window. If you don't have any questions, we'll just drop off and get on with uh, creating a good product for you to, to use. And while you're typing and thinking of things, trying to work out where the mute buttons are, um, you may recall we talked last month, we have the 7.1 release cycle going. Python 6 Oracle 7.1, so we have 7.1.2 out. Latest, greatest. Um, if you have feature ideas, things like that, hop onto GitHub issues where it says get help and post them up there. Things that you want to see, things you don't want to see, let us know. We obviously do depend a little, uh, a lot on what you want. And if you want to ask and suggest things to discuss next month, oh, sorry, uh, next May, the next meeting, please just pipe them as well. I suggest we wrap up and thanks everyone for attending. Next session, as I said, is in May and this video will get posted on the Zoom office hours page in the next couple of days if you want to review it or point your colleagues at it. Thank you everyone for attending. <laughs>